Bro Cam here, and today we are going to look at flashing your new mesh tastic device you just built. This is the Heltec V3 I'm doing, but it is the same for any mesh tastic device. So, first thing we're going to do, we're going to shoot on over to a Chromium based browser. So, either Chrome or Edge. If you have any issues with like Brave or anything else, try Chrome or Edge. So, here I'm using Edge. Um, I have my device plugged in. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, select the device you're trying to flash. We're going with Helltech V3. We're going to select our firmware version. Um, I would just pick one of the stable ones, probably the most recent stable one. And then we just hit flash. Uh, it has a little tidbits about what's included in this one. We can just hit continue. Um, we can just leave that there. It's slower as it says, more reliable. Uh, I think I did go up to this one when I first, when I first, uh, yeah, so you can't see my drop down there. Sorry. Uh, I think I did go up to 90, 921,000 last time. Um, but I'm gonna, I'll just try this one just to make sure it actually works. Uh, full erase and install. So you can just do, actually, I'm going to try to not erase it. I want to see how that works. Um, if you have a brand new Helltech though, yeah, I would do a, a, a full erase and install when you do this, but I'm going to try just to do an update to see if all my settings stay the same. Uh, so we're going to hit update and you cannot see that. Let me, let me pull this up. I'm going to have to switch over to, uh, Display capture. All right, so when you hit update, this window pops up and it's asking you uh, what device, and you're looking for the uh, CP2102 USB to UART bridge controller. You just click that and hit connect. And this down here, we'll start talking to it. And now we just gotta wait. All right, so we're, we're done. Uh, it's completed. Uh, we're still connected to it uh, through the browser. So that's what you're just seeing any of the stuff that comes through the, uh, the serial connection there. But uh, that's, we're done flashing, that's it. So now all we have to do is configure the thing. And that's what we're gonna do next. So we're gonna start by turning on our mesh. We're gonna let it boot up. And it'll get to a screen where it talks about setting the region. Uh, and we're going to jump on over to our app. So this is going to be for the uh, Android section. Um, we'll, so we'll do this one first. Click that blue plus. The thing pops up that says uh, select your device. You just select Meshtastic. Uh, you get a passcode. Pops up on there. Put that in. Uh, no, I don't want to save. Uh, oh, pairing failed. I must have uh, waited too long. Let's try again. Six one six two eight one pair. There it goes. Okay. <laughs> it lied to me. It was not. It did not fail. All right, so we're gonna set our region to whatever your region is, mine's US. And it's gonna reboot while it's doing that. I think I can set my name here to the bro cam. Nope, maybe not. Connect. Right. That's fine, because we can set it in the configuration. So. We're going to go to our uh, ellipses up here. We're going to go to radio configuration. We're going to go to user. So this is the kind of uh, long, annoying part of setting this up. After we change each of these screens, we're going to have to like hit send. And it's going to send it to the radio and it's going to reboot. So long name. 
broke ham. Oh, not broke ham. Uh, there is an option for licensed amateur radio. Uh, I don't know what all that gets me. Um, I haven't read too much into it, but for this particular model, I don't think it gets me much. So um, I just leave it unchecked for now. Uh, so that's, if you want to change your short name, you can, but I kind of like it as BRKH. Uh, so we just, once we're done, we just hit send. It sends it to the radio. The radio reboots. Uh, we go back. All right, next we're gonna set up our channels. So by default, you're gonna have this channel called Long Fast. And this is basically a public channel that um, anybody can talk on. There's no passwords or anything. Uh, so it's nice to leave it on, uh, just so if you're out and about and like you, you might get a ping on it, you know, then you can maybe chat with somebody. Um, or if you know you're you're looking for anybody like uh, say you don't have cell service but you've got this and you pick somebody up, you know it's an emergency preparedness thing. So uh, if we go to Long Fast though, uh, you can see that we've got the channel name, we've got PSK, uh, which just says AQ equals equals, which basically means an empty password. There's no encryption or anything on it. It's an open channel. Uh, uplink and downlink that's for uh, MQTT which is basically relaying um, all the mesh stuff over the internet so if you turn those on your your mesh is never going to shut up because it's going to be pinging the internet if you've got Wi-Fi set up um, it's going to be pinging the internet and uh, getting everybody else's that's that's talking back and forth and it's it can be annoying so I did that for a little bit and I, I quickly turned it off uh, and then position uh, now, since this is the public channel, uh, I don't like my position to be showed like at all. So I just set that to disabled and then we hit save. And then the important thing to note about channel screen, whatever changes you make in here, I can add four channels. Um, as soon as I back out of here and I go back in, all those channels are gone because every change you make you have to uh, send to the radio so before I send it let's add another one we'll call this family and you see here by default it's putting in a PSK in there which is just a, it's just an encrypted password but you can put whatever you want in or you can um, Refresh, you know, you get some random randomness in there. And since this is going to be with family, uh, I'm going to share my position. I'm going to do high precision. We'll hit save. And then we're going to hit send. And this will send these two channels to the radio. There we go. And then uh, so I don't, sending channels does not reset the radio. So that's a pretty quick one. Okay, moving on to device. Uh, under device, you can see you have a roll here. So that's just the, the role for this device. So there's a, a you just kind of have to read the documentation and decide what you want your device to be. Um, you probably just want it to be a client. If you have a base station thing, or if you would like use the one that you carry around as a, like a, a home base station, then you might want it as router client. But uh, you most likely just want client. Uh, and then the rest of these options are, are fine to leave as default. So next we have position. Uh, since we installed a GPS, we're going to set this up. Scroll down a bit to the GPS mode. Change that to enabled. And then we have our, uh, we have to set which pin we soldered the RX and the TX2 for the GPS module. I believe it was 48 and 47. I might have it backwards. Um, it's okay if you put the wrong ones in. Uh, I wouldn't leave it like that, but it's okay if you put it in. 
it, it'll just come up and uh, it won't find your position. So this will reboot now and and okay I got it right so uh, it is it's showing my position there which I'm not going to show but I can show you this <clears throat> it shows the direction of the last node it talked to this would be my uh, my wife's that points an arrow in that direction so there's one way to verify that that's working there's nothing in power you need to play with. Uh, network, if you'd like to connect it to your home network, and then you can set up that MQTT and have like a relay um, kind of thing. If you if you would want that, you don't need to. It's completely optional. Going into the display, uh, we need to set in here freedom units, and we need to set, uh, we want two color and compass north top. That's my personal choices. Um, I just think it looks a little bit better with North always being on top of that circle that I was just showing you. Um, otherwise, it's, I think it depends on which way the device is pointing, but the antenna is not oriented the correct way, so, or, or any particular way. So you never really know, in my opinion. And that's it as far as configuration goes. Uh, you are good to go. There's a bunch of other stuff you can do with this. You don't need to. It, this can be as simple or as complicated as you want it to be. Uh, so that's, that's basically it. So now that uh, that is set up, now I got to set up another one. So we got somebody to talk to. I'm going to do that in the morning. But in the meantime, I'm going to show uh, how these, how you can share what channels you have uh, to, to somebody. So you can do it uh, kind of one of two ways, well, three ways, I guess. You could tell them the name of your channel and give them the PSK and they can manually go in there and enter it and, you know, hopefully they type it all right and everything. Um, or you can click on this uh, icon that has, it's like the Spotify logo sideways, it's like a sound wave or something, a radio wave probably. Uh, and. <laughs> So uh, by default, it just pulls up a QR code. And if they scan that with their Meshtastic app, it will set their Meshtastic to have um, all of your channels. Uh, you can go in and edit that. Uh, and you can actually, uh, or what you could do, instead of scanning the QR code, say they're not right there, you can't do that. There's a, a URL that if you just hit this copy button, uh, you can just take that and text it to them, email it to them, whatever. And if they come into uh, this channel name section and paste that into here and it's into here. So if they were to clear this out and paste it in and hit send, uh, then it would do the same thing. It would give their Meshtastic your channels. So that's what I'm going to do in the morning. Uh, I'll be right back. That's a couple days later, but we're in iOS. Uh, we're going to scan the QR code that's on my on my node onto my wife's node. So on iOS, we're just going to open the camera. We're going to click this Meshtastic app with, that it scans. It's going to pop up the Meshtastic app and it's going to ask us if we want to replace all the channels. These settings will replace all channels. The current lower config will be replaced. And uh, after everything saves, your device will be rebooted. Okay, that might be because the uh, app was closed. Let me try it again. Now that I'm connected to the, the node, there it goes. So now we can click save. Boop, boop, boop. It, uh, it's rebooting the mesh currently. And if we go over to channels, we can see that we still have our primary channel, which is our normal long fast. And we also have our new family channel. So uh, on my phone, if I go to family and I say, hello wife, hope you are doing well today. And I hit send, it pops up on the other side, coming for me. And uh, again, these are, this is the encrypted channel, so not uh, you have to have the password to get into it, basically. So, um, 
which is that you are that url you share and that qr code contain that password which is why i'm going to be resetting it because i've just showed multiple qr codes throughout this video so i'll just reset them and it'll be fine uh another thing to note is that when you're sharing channels like that um you can have up to eight channels i believe but say you set your channels um i just like my channel one is family her channel one is family if i were to share this to somebody else who already had a channel one this would overwrite their channels so that's something to keep in mind to make sure you don't lose your channels well this should be enough to get you started in meshtastic uh i hope you have fun with it get out there and keep meshing 73